All right, guys, so I have been neglecting the garden for just over a week now. I think it's been a total of nine days and it's a little bit crazy here. Um, I just got back from a trip. We were away um, and pretty much there was no one taking care of the garden. So it is a hot mess. Hey guys, so welcome back to Mini Urban Farm. Um, I have been away on a trip for the past nine days and I came back to pretty much a hot mess. Um, you can't really see it right here, but from here and that way, um, it is a disaster. So essentially there was no one taking care of the garden, which normally works out fine, all right? I have my, my irrigation system in place and it gets watered, plus it rained a ton. So in this video, what I wanna show you and what I wanna share with you is if you go away, what can you expect to come back to? All right, nobody was here taking care of the garden for me. Um, I had taken care of it and I had harvested it right before I left, but essentially I came back to a hot mess last night. Um, and so instead of printing it all up and then showing it to you guys, I want you to see the reality so that when you come back from a trip, you know how long it takes you to clean up, harvest, and do all of the things that you need to do to get your garden back on track. All right, so first up, I'm gonna go with the mess of tomatoes here. Um, if you can't tell, these are my indeterminate tomatoes. They were nice and like on the fence or on the um the trellis here but it is a giant bush now there are actually beans underneath this so if you can see these beans run all the way underneath and you can't really tell because of the vines that have just completely grown this was nine days it's not like it was left alone for over a month this is really just we went on vacation and this is what we came back to i am so astonished to see this but at the same time Look at all of the tomatoes that we have in here that we actually need to come in and harvest um, so that we can, you know, prop these back up and get them growing well again. Um, we do have tons of tiny little tomatoes in here, tons of flowers. Um, they're pretty much hidden underneath a lot of this mess. Um, so these ones are what they're supposed to look like. These ones look like they didn't grow too much or maybe they were just trellis better. And then those ones just formed a hot mess over there. Um, the second thing is my cucumbers <laughs> and pretty much they're all gone um, we do have one cucumber here growing behind the trellis um, i thought i had seen a few more before but i am really not surprised by this because what happened was a lot of powdery mildew and there was a lot of powdery mildew on this plant or on these plants before we went on vacation um, but yeah it just completely got out of control and spread and all of these plants are essentially dead we do have, however, tons of green beans and yellow beans, um, so I am going to come through and harvest all of this, hopefully before it starts to rain here because I'm hearing some thunder clouds. Um, and the same thing over here with our tomatoes, right? We have a whole bunch of Roma tomatoes and got a lot of nice red ones ready to harvest, but the trellis, this is the Florida weed trellis, you can see it's like leaning this way. And so got to prop these back up, got to harvest it, maybe prune some of it. And the same thing on that side, that giant bush that you see back there is actually Roma tomatoes. Um, and they are now spilling out because, yeah, they, they just grew that way. And you can see the Florida weave. They're not supposed to be going, okay, Milo's watering them down here. Um, they're not supposed to be growing that way, the sticks. They're kind of supposed to be leaning outwards from each other. Um, but in here, there's a ton of fruit as well. So, oh my gosh, and tons of spider webs. <laughs> apparently um, I was doing a really good job at making sure that the cutworms were not getting to it but we have a lot of damage I'm not sure if it's cutworm damage or not um, but we are getting tons of stuff eating through this in just the past couple days so if you're going on a trip and you don't have anybody to actually take care of the garden for you like come in and make sure that things are growing properly um, and trellising and that sort of thing then you want to make sure that you have everything set up um, and that's what we did i set up my timer to water twice a day i have my little irrigation um, timer it's not really a drip system it's more of like a sprinkler but that waters everything twice a day it did rain a whole bunch um, it didn't rain every day but it rained i think a good couple times and pretty hard so that contributed to a lot of this growth and mess and just stuff coming up um, the other thing that I did is I came in here and I did a lot of my fertilization right so I put down um, any 
blood and bone marrow, I put down worm castings, um, anything that I noticed that was deficient, I went ahead and fertilized so that it wouldn't continue to get worse while we're gone. And the last thing I did is I came through and I picked off any cutworms, I sprayed my BT, I put down some neem oil, and I just tried to make sure that the garden was as pest free as possible um, before I left on our trip. And the last thing I did um, in the garden was actually plant out some sweet potato um, slips, I guess you call them. Um, I've never grown these before, but this is actually the first one that I think was growing before um, we left. And then these all are all brand new. All right. Everything in this tray here, and I don't want to pull them out completely, but everything in this tray here is brand new growth from the past week. So these grow pretty fast. And then I had propagated some herbs here and I put them in here. They're currently growing roots um, that they just sprouted when we were gone. And of course I made sure to get anything out that didn't need to be in our little um, mini greenhouse here. Anything that did need to be protected went in there. Anything that was a little bit more, you know, sustained or needed watering um, that we weren't here yet, that went out here. Now the salad greens did really well. Um, the arugula here is doing pretty, pretty good. Um, I will say this one is like, super sprouty which I think this plant is probably ready to bolt at any time now but everything else did pretty well I didn't have too much pest damage on that this cucumber plant as well has a whole bunch of brown leaves this is really bad powdery mildew and then this side of the plant is doing pretty well um, lots of new green growth but it still has that same powdery mildew um, the mustard greens doing fine so far and before we left I actually planted out some new baby kale greens you can see those are starting to grow a little bit but you can also see some of the damage from the pest while we were gone so i will have to come back here and spray some bt um, and put down more coffee grounds as part of my treatment for this um, and then over here our herbs are looking like a hot mess honestly because it has been hotter than you know what and we're back over at our tomatoes which need to be harvested all right so for my garden cleanup this is the plan i'm going to get my tomatoes trellised all right everything that is over there in that big ball um, just needs to be trellised appropriately um, i'm going to be harvesting all the tomatoes off of there that are red in the process i will then move over to the rest of our tomatoes and prop those back up um, intertwine them in the florida weave trellis as i can and harvest everything off of there as well and then for our beans they look like they've been doing pretty well so i'm gonna go ahead and harvest everything off of there too um, i don't think I'm gonna find too many issues but I guess we'll find out and then at the end of it I will come back and tell you how long it took me to get the garden under control after all of that um, and if I have time left today I will try to figure out what to do with these sweet potato slips because I think I'm going to have to take them off the sweet potato soon and start getting them to grow more roots all right, so the main way that I trellis my indeterminate tomatoes is by using these little Velcro strips, which I really love. I've had this roll for practically forever, um, and they just come apart like that. You cut them, and then they are completely reusable, which means that when I'm getting rid of the trellising of my tomatoes at the end of the season, right, I'm removing all of the vines off of the trellis, I can just un-Velcro them instead of having to cut through the twine like I've had to do in the past, and then I can save those little strips that I've cut off, and I just hang them or like velcro them onto the trellis and reuse them in a later season they are honestly one of my favorite tools to use in the garden i will leave the link in the description if you guys want to pick up a few for yourself all right so i got a good portion of them up um, you can see how much pruning i've done and how tall they got they were definitely not that tall before we left they've grown like a foot um, i haven't really started the harvesting process because i'm just trying to get everything up for right now that seems to be the best way to go about it but you can see the difference. Look at how bushy and what a mess those are versus these ones that are all nice and trellised and they are much thinner and just overall better. Um, you can also see how much I've actually gotten rid of so far. I've just been pruning anything, um, any suckers that I am you know, not wanting to keep, but anything that is really like growing flowers like this, which is a whole heap of them, I'm trying to keep that intact and you can see how long this got. This is like a good four feet from the fence um, from the last place it was trellised. So that is going to go way above the fence here. Um, and I'm going to try to save these ones. But I mean, they've just it's gotten so heavy. This is what happens when they're not trellised properly. Um, they just plop over like that. And you can see how thick those vines are. And they, they just need to be put up. All right, guys. So another thing I want to show you, and I'm going to try to make... It so that it focuses here but if you see all of those little bumps along the edge of this tomato plant here um, those are 
growing roots, right? So you can see there's little things sticking out of them. All of this was trying to produce new roots for this plant. Um, as you can see, it has a whole bunch of flowers um, and it actually had a little tomato on it as well that came off. But anything that was laying along the ground on the soil um, will regrow itself right into new roots. This will be an entirely new plant. So essentially, if I wanted to, I could come and just clip this here um, and put this in water and it will grow new roots and plant it out and it will be ooh, it bug on me and plant it out and there'll be a whole new tomato plant off of this one cutting. Alright guys, so I have been out here for about half an hour and there is a lot of cleanup that I've done. I started with my indeterminate tomatoes. You can see how much pruning I did. Um, that is everything that got pruned off of these plants. And now I can actually see all the tomatoes on there. A lot of them are gathered at the bottom. Um, these tomatoes, they, I think, produce a little bit slower than I'm used to. So I might have to experiment with a whole bunch of new varieties for cherry tomatoes moving forward. Uh, but you can see we have tons of little green tomatoes in all of these clusters. I tried not to remove any flowers or any fruit, but that honestly did not end up happening. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of fruit that came off with this plant. Um, and it was just impossible to prune without getting anything off that you know I really wanted to keep um, however anything that was like a, a sucker that was growing a cluster of tomatoes like this I just left it um, you can see these clusters over here off of a sucker and the one cucumber plant that was right here I removed which is now here on the floor so then I can be a little bit more lenient with this plant or those couple plants and let them cross over because I have the trellis space now. Um, the same thing with the other side. That's where all of my cucumbers were. <laughs> um, I harvested just a few last cucumbers and that's the rest of it. So there will be tons more space um, for these to continue bushing that way. Um, I haven't actually gotten to this because it looks fine for right now. Now I was okay with removing that cucumber set of plants um, those cucumber plants because they were like I said completely overrun with powdery mildew but also because it's the middle of June and it has been extraordinarily hot here and I don't think that they were gonna survive that much longer anyway um, so I might end up replanting now in fall now I didn't get to my Roma tomatoes or my beans yet you can see my harvest basket is mostly empty um, because it is about to rain here the clouds are getting really dark and I don't want to get poured on so I'm gonna call it a day for right now so far I've done half an hour I will clock it at that and then I will come back tomorrow and pick up where we left off all right guys so it is now the next morning and before we jump back into harvesting everything um, I want to show you what happened while we were away now I definitely made a mistake this is my worm bin um, and as you can see there's still a lot of paper scraps in here and stuff but I made a mistake in the sense that I overfed the worms. So there is a lot of food around here on this side. And I think they got most of that. Um, but there's a lot of food scattered around. And I think that overfeeding them um, led to a lot of moisture issues. And when I got back, all of the worms were kind of like escaped from the bin um, and laying around the floor. And they were no longer alive. And there's currently no worms inside the bin. So that means that I will be starting over with worms, um, probably not right away because I want to do a little bit more research and learn a little bit more so that that doesn't happen again. Um, but you can see that compost is like regular compost in the compost bin that I have back there in the garden is a lot more, um, is a lot less temperamental than raising worms. So if you're considering getting into worms, I would definitely encourage you to do your research um, so that you don't kill all of them when you go on vacation or for any other reason. I will definitely be jumping back into worms, but probably not right this minute. <laughs> all right, so the main goal for this morning was to get everything, um, tomatoes, beans, all of the stuff harvested. You can see that the light this morning is quite different than the previous day because the sun hits really hard in this specific spot. I think it was like 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning when I was doing all this harvesting. So I try to go as fast as possible, um, mainly because it's like 95 degrees outside and I don't want to be out there any longer than I have to. Um, you can see I'm discarding some of the tomatoes that have like pests in them or what I've noticed 
noticed a lot lately is that the birds have been pecking at them um, and so there, we get a lot of birds that just kind of like sit in the trees or on the fence line waiting to you know get their chance at some of the tomatoes we did get quite a bit of them but i think i might be changing this variety out for a different type of cherry tomato or grape tomato um, just because they don't produce as much as I like and they have a lot of cracking and damage because it rains so much and I like my tomatoes with less cracking on them. So in the next couple of seasons, I'm gonna be experimenting um, with a few different varieties like I've been doing for the past couple of seasons anyway. All right guys, so this is what I got if Milo would move. Um, so I have here almost an entire bowl of green beans. This is a pretty good sized bowl. Um, and then we have my Roma tomatoes and we got our cherry tomatoes. Now, these things, I just took them off the plant. I didn't wait for them until they turned red or anything. Milo, stop. He wants to go back inside. So I didn't wait for them to turn red on the vine um, because we are getting a lot of pests. We still have a lot of cutworms. Um, they seem to have come back. So I have just allowed them to ripen on the countertop is what I've been doing. Um, and I have some with some blossom and rot. Now these were the little ones that remained <laughs> up on the plant. Um, I since took everything else off, not for you. And then I fertilized um, with some blood and bone marrow. Sorry guys. Um, and then it seems like that took care of most of the problem. So we shouldn't have too much of those moving forward, but I'm pretty happy with this harvest since basically I was on vacation and didn't have to do anything for it. All right guys, so it is I think 45 minutes that I've been out here plus my half an hour ish that I was out here yesterday so total just over an hour um, probably between an hour and an hour and a half um, and as you can see I'm sweating it is hotter than you know what out here so I'm gonna go inside um, it is about 9 a.m. right now and I've been out here for a while and it's already like in the 90s um, so yeah that is pretty much the end of our garden cleanup for coming back from vacation. Now, I am going to leave this garden intact for right now. Um, it is the middle of June, so I'm not going to rip it all out yet. It's still producing rather well. And the fact that we had so much cold weather, even into like May and April, I'm going to leave it so that I get a little bit more out of it. But the plan is I'm going to put my sweet potatoes when I rip everything else out. And I have two more garden beds to plant out from scratch with sweet potato and okra. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!